You know, about two and a half years ago, I made a meme video saying Perdido was secretly one of the best blades in the game because his auto attack gimmick was funny and you could beat enemies without moving. I hope none of you actually listen to that because honestly, he's not really that great. But at the very least, he is unique. His optimal play style is pretty drastically different from most blades in the game, and his skills would make him seem like they learned something from other skills in the game before releasing him, but it still didn't really make him measure up to the actually really good blades. He's not really that bad, and honestly he can be kind of fun, but he's definitely a blade who is overshadowed very easily. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Perdido, discussing all of his strengths and weaknesses, and seeing how to use him most effectively. As usual, if you enjoy my guide content, please su consider subscribing to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So Perdido is a clone weapon of the Aether Cannon class of weapons. His unique weapon is called the Decimation Cannon. As a Torna New Game Plus blade, you cannot change his core chip, so the stats you see are what you get. His auto attack stat when you max out his trust is 1581, which is pretty decent for an offensive blade, but his crit rate is only 15%, which is not that great overall. His block rate is 10%, which isn't ever really going to be that impactful. His physical defense and ether defense are both 5%, making him one of the squishiest blades in the entire game should he get aggro, so that can be very dangerous and a factor to keep in mind when using Perdido. His stat mod is 10% strength, which is very odd since all of his auto attacks and arts are ether based, and his cooldown is 4, which is about the average for blades in this game. His courtship inherently comes with a plus 50 dexterity, so his hit chance is slightly better. As usual though, his skill tree is what sets him apart, so let's take a look at that now. Perdido's first skill is Bushido. This will increase his damage from the front by 10% at level 1, and 50% at level 5. A 50% damage increase from the front is a decent skill to have, and being in front of an enemy is not a hard conditional to meet, so this is basically a free 50% damage buff, which is always nice to have if you're an offensive blade. It's not the largest increase, but it's not terrible either, and can contribute to Perdido doing more damage. It's a good enough skill. Perdido's second skill is Stay True. This will increase his auto attack damage by 20% at level 1, and 100% at level 5. Oh boy, auto attack damage increase. Normally this would be a pretty meaningless skill, but it's a bit better on Perdido at the very least because of the rest of his kit. Having more damage on auto attacks isn't necessarily bad, but auto attacks are typically a much weaker form of damage compared to arts and specials, so it's hard to be a consistent damage dealer with only auto attacks. This certainly is not Xenoblade 1. Perdido being a cannon clone does mean his auto attacks cannot be interrupted by block rate or anything, and he can fire them from far away, so that's at least a positive. But the real reason this skill isn't terrible is his third skill, which is Double Strike. This skill will guarantee that all auto attacks hit twice, and increases damage by 20% at level 1 and 30% at level 5. Having every single auto attack hit twice essentially doubles all auto attack DPS, which makes it a much more valuable strategy. I do wish it stacked with Galaxy or Black Cube so you could have four auto attacks at once since then it could actually be very nice, but this is still decent enough to make the auto attack based strategy work. Could you probably still get more damage out of just focusing on arts and specials? Yeah, probably, but then you're just outclassed by all the other cannons, and that's not any fun, so you may as well use this gimmick that Monolith tried to give him. Oh yeah, the 30% increase is also pretty nice just being there, so I suppose that's at least another positive if you don't care much about auto attacks. Ironically enough, the double attacks means he charges up arts very quickly. Regardless though, let's take a look at his specials for now. Perdido's level 1 special is Diamond Crash. This is a physical, single-hit special that is pretty dang fast, and besides that, there is virtually nothing special about it. The damage ratio is once again the average 300 at level 1, 460 at level 5, and 480 at max affinity, and there is no special modifier, and the bonus effect is pretty boring, increasing damage to toppled enemies. The special is fast enough that the bonus effect is easy to fulfill at the very least, but it still feels pretty unspectacular overall as a special, without too much situational use. Perdido's level 2 special is Diamond Flight. This is an ether based 5 hit special of pretty average speed. And just like his level 1, there's not much about it that sets it apart at all. No special modifiers, the average damage ratio for level 2 specials of 420 at level 1, 580 at level 5, and 609 at max affinity. And the bonus effect is even more boring and not too useful of just reducing his current aggro by 40%. This is not a very impactful special at all, and there isn't much reason to ever use this special over another option. Perdido's level 3 special is Diamond Hands. Alright, this special is a bit better. It's a 4 hit physical special, but this time around it has a pretty dang nice damage ratio of 550 at level 1, 750 at level 5, and 816 at max affinity, which is above average 
and it comes with a 50% critical hit modifier, which can make it hurt quite a bit. Its bonus effect is Gardenal, which is decent enough, so you never have to worry about block rate. This is definitely the best of his three standard specials, and probably the main one you'd want to use after you finish auto attack cancelling and spamming. Nothing super spectacular still, but at least it's something. Perdido's level 4 special is Diamond Inferno. This special has a pretty high damage ratio of 1125, and also has an 80% critical hit modifier, which is pretty impressive, and can make this special hurt quite a bit. Unfortunately, it is one of those rare level 4 specials with no bonus effects. So that's really unfortunate for Perdido, but at the very least, it's pretty strong just as a special move option and a decent special to consider using. It also helps with setting up those ever-important fusion combos and gives invincibility, which is always nice. There isn't a special that's particularly impressive in his kit, but at least his 3 and 4 are functional good specials to dish out some damage, I suppose, and that's all you can really ask for out of an auto-attack-focused blade. For setup, as stated, you cannot change his core chip at all, so for aux cores, I am running Affinity Max Attack and Outdoor Attack up. If Auto Attack damages his gimmick, you may as well try to make them hit as hard as possible, because at least that way it'll be funny, right? For other options, Night Vision is always good, and honestly, I don't know what else you would really want to run on him besides that, so moving on to accessories. I am running a Crimson Headband. This may seem weird with his lower critical hit rate, but I do plan on using Numa to help buff that up in some fights, because why not? I am also running the Abyss Mask, because more damage is always better! Taking an extra 55% damage is pretty rough though, and you can get killed easily, so you can definitely run a safer option if you want, like the Swimsuit on Morag. I am also running a Violent Stone to increase auto attack damage by 90%, because why not just go all in and trying to make it work, right? I'm using Perdido on Morag for this reason. She traditionally has a very bad cannon kit, but her auto attacks with cannons are the fastest, and she gets other auto attack bonuses on her driver's skill tree, so it ends up being weirdly a decent fit. For pouch items, since we're going to be auto-attacking far more than using arts, this setup is focused around special recharge with the Clicky Clacks and Toragoth Snow Pouch. Perdido auto-attacks charge up arts really quickly should you need them, and this ensures you can use a lot of level 3 and level 4 specials. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Perdido practically. So you can kind of generally use Perdido as an offensive blade as you want. You can chain attack with them with other strong blades and get a lot of damage out of that. But the funniest thing to do with Perdido was just auto-attacking and just trying to do as much damage as you possibly can with those. So that's what we're going to be focusing on for the most part. Although at the end of some of these fights, we'll be chain attacking. But for first of all, Tyranitite and Turtle, we're going to be activating Numa so we can get these crits with these auto-attacks. And you're going to see some great auto-attack damage there. Y'all saw that 80 and 90,000 auto-attacks on these launches? These, this is some really good damage right now, guys. This is some impressive, incredible damage right now. And you can only do this kind of damage with auto attacks with Perdido. Just ignore the fact that you have infinitely faster ways to kill enemies, because this is this is the best thing you can do, just trust me. Here's Perdido's level 4. We're going to get an easy damage cap out of that, so more easy damage here. And now we're going to go back to auto attacking. Unfortunately, since I set up a fire orb, my auto attack damage is cut now. A little bit unfortunate for Perdido, but not really the biggest deal in the world. We're just gonna keep firing away until he dies here. No big deal at all. Pretty easy. And now that he's using Ultra Annihilation Flare, I'm going to run away so I don't get hit by it. But then for some reason I get hit by it all the way over here anyway. I don't know how that works, but whatever. We survive because we are lucky, and that's all that really matters. So right now he has spike damage, so I'm very careful about how I'm attacking him because every one of these hits does a lot of spike damage to me. But we're able to make sure that we're doing okay. And uh, he's almost dead, just a little bit further. And finally the auto-attacking Perdido will eventually be able to kill him. Not very fast, but you know what? Auto-attacks, If it, this is probably the fastest you can kill him with auto-attacks. Honestly, maybe not. Maybe you could actually set up Cutie Pie to do more auto-attack damage. I don't know, but... It's at least funny, somewhat. So, now we're gonna show off a little bit of the, uh, Amoeba Blair Carlos. One thing I think is really good about Perdido in these multi-enemy fights is that you can kind of weave in and out, and you don't have much cooldown on your auto-attacks, so you can just quickly target enemies, kill them really fast, they don't have that much health, and... It works pretty well for, like, challenge mode, where there's a bunch of mobs and enemies, because your auto-attacks can wipe out a lot of really less HP enemies in, like, a single combo or so, which is, uh... Not bad overall. I think it's actually a, like a decent positive for Perdido. Against high rail health enemies, Perdido is not nearly as useful, I don't think. But you can do a couple things with him to have a decent enough strategy. I mean, we're going to try to stay in front of Carlos because that's going to give us the uh, 
biggest chance of um, landing all our auto attacks now. Unfortunately, Tora decided he wasn't going to break Carlos, so we ended up dying in two hits because Abyss Mask is just that uh, great of an accessory where we're going to easily get two-shotted. And Pretty Doe's low defense don't really help that much, but you know what? We're just going to keep moving forward. We're not really worried about that at all. I don't really care about dying in a challenge like this. That's just part of the risk of using Perdido and going all in on the auto attack damage. We don't care about death. We are just here to win. That is all that we are worried about. So what I'm going to be trying to do in this fight is uh, just whittling him down to the enraged state, using our amazing auto attack damage to make that happen. Uh, and a combination of uh, Tora and um, Rex's uh, blades as well. Not too difficult here. Perdido's um, extra dexterity means we're not going to like be missing that many attacks even when Pyra is active instead of Mithra, so that's at least a benefit. Even without Foresight, you're able to hit higher agility foes a decent amount of the time. Of course, now I'm missing everything, so maybe not. Maybe you should be using Night Vision, unless Mithra's not out, but we're going to be using Numa very soon here, or he's going to be swapping back to uh, Mithra in a second, so we're not really worried about that. We're just going to be focused on doing as much damage to him as we possibly can here. And uh, we got the level 4 Mega Explosion ready to use whenever, in case we need the invincibility. That's one benefit for Perito. If you're not using specials, you can just keep auto-attacking and uh, holding on to that special to when you really need it. Now, honestly, the damage isn't really that impressive. You're, you're looking right now... We're doing like 40 to like 60,000 damage with our auto attacks at most when they get crits and stuff. And I mean, that's not terrible, but you can just get so much more damage out of other sources. So I, I don't really think this is that viable of a gimmick for the most part, but it's all right at the very least. I'm using this level four on launch for some reason. It ends up working. He doesn't fall to the ground in time. So, you know what? That's a decent amount of damage there. Not too bad overall. So, I activate Numa now, so we're going to have a lot more damage now for um, the next minute at least, as far as uh, crits and everything like that, because that'll boost all of our auto attack damage, which is really nice. Unfortunately, Rex is missing his topples even with Numa's foresight, so I don't know what's going on there. We're doing decent auto attack damage still. We're getting him slowly closer to that enraged state, which is what I was kind of looking for here. But I don't really get the combination of uh, specials and driver combos I want, so it ends up making the fight scarier than it probably should be. Like, he enrages here, and I'm worried about Wild Wave, so I have to instantly use my level 4. I did not want to use it there, and that kind of throws off the rest of the fight, unfortunately. Because uh, now I don't have a way to use my um, Mega Explosion, because Tora doesn't have anything, and I don't have anything. So I try to charge it up really quickly, but then I just get straight up one-shotted here, which is really sad. My uh, lifeline does not want to save me in this battle, unfortunately. Not a big deal. We can get Maxfinity back really quickly because uh, driver combos and all of our constant attacks. There's the lifeline. Finally works. And uh, Mega Explosion. We get it set up on the topple, but I decide I don't really want to chain attack on the topple. Actually, I do chain attack on the topple, I think. Or I don't. Oh, well. Not a big deal. Right now, I'm just focused on trying to get a fusion combo set up that I want on, like, a break or something. Level 4. And I try to get it here, but I think the topple comes out and I just decide to chain attack after this. Because I have enough damage at this point anyway. Because he's in rage, he's really weak to Dark Element. Which is uh, what's going to be helping us here. Because uh, Perdido's chain attack damage isn't really going to be enough here. And we need to break a Light Orb anyway, so... Uh, I have Elma on Morag for the sole purpose of uh, helping us kill this enemy here. You can kind of see here, auto attack strategy was uh, going to take forever on him anyway. We weren't doing all that much damage. It would have eventually worked probably, but it's just not something to really rely on. And if I really wanted to save my level 4s to block every dangerous attack, that's an option as well. And you also don't have to run the Abyss Mask if you want to be really safe and not die in one hit like I did. But, you know, that's not a big deal. So... Elma's just going to end the rest of his health next uh, next round of the chain attack. Mithra does no damage anymore since he's light element and has super effect. So that's unfortunate as well. But we're just going to end the fight here. It's uh, gone on long enough at this point, if, if you will. So violent streak with Elma. Easy kill. Not too hard at all. So Perdido has an interesting gimmick, but... It's not really that great. He's not going to be doing all that much damage. And uh, 
Honestly, you're better off with just using a different cannon or a different option. Auto attack strategies are not really that amazing. It can be funny, and against certain enemies it's not too terrible, but I'd still recommend just using other options over this in general. But hey, if you want to use fun auto attack based strategy, this is an option, and you can have a lot of fun using Perdido. I hope you guys have learned something from watching this video. I think that's going to cover it. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below. And as always, look forward to the remaining guides. we got four of these blade guides left, and then i got some other really good content planned for after that, so I hope you're all looking forward to that. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful and blessed day. I will see you soon.